Welcome back to theCUBE. After dark, it's really not that dark, but we're here in San Francisco. This is part two of day one of theCUBE at RSAC 2024. Really excited to have Lindsay Havens here. She's the Vice President of Marketing at Finite State IO, security company doing some pretty cool things, protecting critical infrastructure. Lindsay, great to see you. Thanks for spending great some time with us. Great to see you. Thank, you. thank you for having me. So tell us about Finite State. That's a really kind of humble name. You know, Infinite State would be kind of really a little bit overdone. Finite State, feels like I can get my arms around it. Tell us about your company. Right, yeah, so Finite State does software supply chain security. Yeah, we're focused on protecting all things IoT and OT, embedded device security, that's what we're all about. Okay, when did the company start? When did yeah, so it? we're about seven years old now, so. Oh, so before the solar, famous solar winds hack, that everybody realized, oh wow, we've got to protect the supply chain. Right. Were you in that business prior to the solar winds hack? And sort of saw this coming? Yeah. Uh, so our CEO was at Vattel for a long time right. prior, and, and he saw that you know a lot of um, cybersecurity was really just not kind of keeping up with the the digital era. So things were getting connecting, coming online, everything was interconnected, and he saw that there was a big gap in security around that. So that's where. You know, most critical infrastructure in the old days, it was air-gapped. So you kind of didn't have to worry about it. Right. And then somebody had the brilliant idea, I, I, I guess tongue-in-cheek, let's connect the electric grid to the internet, which would bring so many other benefits. Oh, <laughs> wow, yeah. okay. So how do you guys solve this problem? Yeah, I mean, so everything is connected now. So not just like, I mean, the device that I wear around my wrist to, a lot of health monitoring systems, like my Peloton, for instance, everything is connected. My car? A car, medical devices, health, you know, in the healthcare space, like, we need to secure all of those things, and Finite State is helping to look deep inside of those devices, make sure that everything in those devices is actually, like, we understand the vulnerability that is with living within those devices, and so we're looking at a, very deep, you know, we use binary analysis to break down every component of every every software firmware, everything within that device to make sure that it's secure. So it's it's software supply chain. That's right, right? software. So yes. you're not, not dealing with the hardware. So it's all the different sort of flows right. that, that feed into that code. Right. So, okay, so uh, uh, an Apple Watch, that's uh, pretty sophisticated, but when I think about nuclear power plants or right. rail systems, yeah. you know, or or you know, water supplies, yeah. right? There's all kinds of software connecting the digital physical world to the digital world. Right. And I would imagine we can't even imagine the complexity yeah. of all that. You don't want to see any of that go offline, right? So I mean, and it could be first party code third party, open source, there's just so many means of getting different codes, and I mean, that's important. We need those, we need all of those components, but we also need to know that they're very safe and very secure, so that's what we're doing. I was plowing my driveway one day, and I plugged in the headphones, and I was listening to Sonal on uh, A16Z, and she did an awesome, I keep coming back to Solar Winds. did an awesome, like, anatomy of the Solar Winds hack, and the thing that blew me away is the the security pros were patching their systems doing the very things that were supposed to keep them safe but they were just patching with malware I couldn't believe it I was like wow how do you protect against that I still don't know how you protect against that how do you protect against that yeah I mean finite state one of our benefits is that we we look at what what is hurting you the most? So we have a scoring methodology and a prioritization that helps you understand what is actually exploitable, what has been weaponized, what is actually like out there in the wild today. So that's the methodology that we use. We, we, there's vast amounts of data. So you have to be able to like extrapolate the data that really matters, that you really need to patch or protect and that you need to focus on today. And that's what that's what we're... Are your customers, it sounds like a real mix. I mean, the diversity 
of critical infrastructure or wearables. It's right. all over the place. It is. So it could be big device manufacturers. It could be uh, power plants. I mean, is right. that, is that, is that who exactly, your customers are? Exactly. So it's from personal device manufacturers to energy sector to automobiles to medical device manufacturers. Those are all of our customers. I mean, anywhere that there could be a major impact to health, human safety, or the electrical grid, those are our customers. As somebody who has been following this for a while, an expert in the field, I would consider you. I hate to ask this question, but I gotta ask it. On a scale of sort of one to 10, where 10 is like completely protected, and a one is, oh crap. Where are we in the spectrum of critical infrastructure? I know we're closer to oh crap. Are we beyond one? I mean, it depends on the specific sector. I mean, there have been a lot of regulations that have been coming out more recently. Specifically, the FDA has come out, you know, with the for medical devices. If you're putting something out in the market, you're going to have to pass through some very strict regulatory requirements that the FDA is approving. So it really kind of depends. I, I would say, you know, from it, it varies. I, I don't want to throw any vertical under the bus, but <laughs> I think we uh, we can all understand okay. that some are a little more behind than others. All right, I won't put you on the spot. So you're basically saying there's a there's a a wide spectrum of readiness yeah. that actually varies? Is it to vary by industry or it does. does it more vary by company? It varies, I would say uh, it's both. Yeah. I mean, there there are some front runners, like we, we typically do business with the the modern, more front runner. I want to be, I want to use security as a, a differentiating factor. Like they're usually coming to us because they are ahead of the game. And that's generally, you know, that's who we're looking for to do business with us. but. You know, as a whole, like, look, we, we really need to level with ourselves. Like, this is truly a matter of national security. We need to take this very seriously. And I think it's going to become very commonplace that, you know, just like today we go to the, we go to the store and there's a label with every single ingredient on whatever we're purchasing, that's the, the future state. Like we need to understand exactly what's in our device, how secure is their device, you know, open policy, they're doing everything that they can to help make sure that policies are in place to help me and you and consumers and like critical infrastructure to, we need to like catch up. Uh, look, yeah. like we need to take this very seriously. Yeah, open policy, admit this is doing some amazing work. Yeah. Are there industries that are there are obviously they're doing a better job. I would presume, like I hope, defense is one that is pretty in tune. I hope our our airlines are are on top of things. <laughs> so, what attracted you as a woman in tech to cybersecurity? Because it's not uh, an industry, a sector that is. I mean, I mean, it seems to me it's probably less women in cyber than there are in other sectors of IT. And it's probably IT is less than 20% of our industry is women. I think it's even lower than that in cyber. Maybe that's true, maybe it's not. What attracted you to this, this superhero world? Yeah, a few things. So cyber security has always been intriguing to me. One, I find it very interesting. Two, I, I actually have a, a master's degree in forensic psychology. So I've always been kind of drawn to the dark side a little bit. So. So understanding like why do cyber criminals do what they do and like and how can we protect ourselves? I take it really personal when when it comes to like an attack on me or somebody in in my life or the nation that I live within. Like I take it really personally. And so I want to work for I want to work in an industry and for a company that's just doing the right thing. And that's what we're doing. I mean, I, I want to make a difference in this world, and I feel like I'm working at a company and within an industry that's making an impact, doing the right thing. Did you ever want to be like an FBI profiler? Was that <laughs> <laughs> that's funny that you say that. I actually was having a, a good conversation with, I will not name the government agency here, but yes, my, my intent was I was either going to be a government, I was going to be a, a profiler, or I was going to be a trial consultant uh, and, and so the profiler was definitely like on the top cool. of my list. I, I wanted to work at an agency. How so. about superhero? Did you ever have, when you were a kid, did you ever have like a superhero that uh, you, you I, I mean, modeled there, there, yourself after? 
no, I, I think not, but like, you know, Superwoman is always yeah, there. She, right, she, but I mean, a lot of cyber pros, <laughs> they, you know, kind of said they, they, they gravitated towards superheroes. Yeah. Are going to help, to your point, yeah. you know, protect the world. Right, so, yeah. So, and that's what you guys are doing. That's what uh, we're trying, Sunday. like one day, one day at a time, right? So what's next for you guys? What's, what's happening here at RSA and then what's next? Yeah, I mean, it's super exciting to be here at RSA. I love just the collaboration with partners and, and with people like, you know, Open Policy. They're doing awesome things. Um, I'm, I'm personally super excited about AI and what it's going to do for us as, a, as an industry in cybersecurity. Like, we need to embrace it. We don't need to be afraid of it. And we, we just need to, like, take it to the next level. Like, this is our opportunity to get ahead and not be just, like, playing whack-a-mole and just waiting and being reactionary this is our opportunity and we need to embrace it we need to like leverage i you know i was in the innovation start uh the innovation startup the the whole sandbox this morning and there were there were several companies that are doing a lot around ai data security and so i i think if we all work together we're going to be able to you know get ahead of the game and and really leverage ai to our advantage and you know well the adversaries are taking advantage exactly, of AI, so, which is why so we, we had better. To. Exactly. The, the good guys and gals had better. Lindsay, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Yeah, it was fantastic lovely, lovely. seeing you. Thank All you right, so much. Appreciate it. All, All right. right, keep it right there. More action from theCUBE after dark. This is Dave Vellante, voices hanging on. Keep it right there. Be right back.